All right, welcome to the party. We are at 18,000 feet on a very short flight, about 180 miles from where we landed yesterday, KCDC, Kilo Charlie Delta Charlie, Cedar City, Utah, to a little airport just outside of Salt Lake City called South Valley Regional. Their uh, ICAO code is Uniform 42. I kind of wanted to do an experiment this afternoon, and that, that's why I'm doing this flight. I wanted to go outside my comfort zone a little and not go into a controlled airport, not go into an, uh, an airport with an ILS frequency, not go into any published approach. Uh, I, all I did was load up the flight with four waypoints, our origin, point of origin, our destination, and two waypoints along the way low altitude IFR, those two waypoints were MLF, Mike Lima, Foxtrot, and then the one that we're heading towards right now, which is FRNZ White, Foxtrot Romeo November Zulu Yankee, and from which we are five minutes, 31 seconds right now. Lots of airplanes in the sky, as you can see. Um, I was curious, there's Frenzy, and there's U-42. You can actually see I would push the V key and show you, but it's they haven't fixed it yet. Although I did note in yesterday's developer's update that apparently they are going to fix it. Anyway, that's Salt Lake. Uh, Salt Lake City KSLC International Airport, at which I landed, just slightly north of that. U-42 is 13 miles south of the city. And apparently, based on my research, it is a general aviation airport in the area. Uh, um, you know, pretty good sized one. Anyway, I want to see what's going to happen. The weather's perfect, so it's a good opportunity for me to, to try to learn. Um, I've gotten pretty comfortable with the uh, aircraft, but uh, some of these procedures at these uncontrolled airports are a little less clear to me. Uh, so we, we did just get a, a direction from ATC to expect the visual be ve vectored into the visual runway 16. Don't know quite what to make of that because the winds are from the north, not from the south. But I'm going to follow ATC instructions on this to see what happens because it's not an issue in terms of you know crashing or not being able to find the airport. The weather's perfect um, and it's a short flight, so. Uh, I figured this is a good opportunity to try to learn. Four flight is showing us 11 minutes from the air, airport, our destination, and specifically, our distance to our destination is uh, 58 nautical miles. Planes, planes everywhere. Checked on a few of these airplanes uh, when I got their call signs on FlightAware. And uh, one from Oakland, Southwest uh, Oakland to uh, Midway, Chicago. I found American Airlines from uh, Charlottesville to San Francisco. So lots of airplanes. But most of them are well, well, well above me. Flying on one coast to another. Now the 9,000 here for Mr. Robert. Descend and maintain 9,000 feet on her tray Whiskey Bravo. We'll throttle back here a little. Anyway. Airport's at like 4,400 feet, airport elevation. There's only one runway, runway 16 in the opposite direction, runway 34. It's 5,860 feet long. The in-sim winds at this destination were 0, 9, 5, and 6. The real weather winds are like 340 at 9, if I recall. But whatever, I'm going to do what they're telling me. I've had a lot of issues with 
ATC, but I, I wanted to just try this. I figured the weather's perfect, and if you don't push yourself outside your comfort zone, you'll never learn. There's the Great Salt Lake in front of us. At least I believe that's... Let's see. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, we're just a... Just automates that. It says I can see it even though I can't. Oh, well, there it is. Holy Christ! Oh, <laughs> I think this might be a problem if this was happening. By the way, how did he say he has me in sight if I'm behind him? That's hilarious. I mean, this would not be hilarious in real life. I'd be shitting myself, but. Wow. That is that is uh, the closest encounter I've had with an airplane. It's obviously descending into KSLC. What was the... Delta 1601. Let's run that on FlyAware real fast. FlyAware, DAL 1601, DAL... I bet you a dollar. He said he's about to head into land. Delta 1601, contact Salt Lake Center on 119er, Delta 919 By the way, Delta Airlines 1601 left Las Vegas. Ooh, that's a chop. Going to 119 Delta At 131 Delta today, Bravo. Pacific Daylight Time, and is arriving at Salt Lake City at 344. Salt Lake Center, Delta November 34, Trey Whiskey Bravo is at 12,900 feet, descending 10,000 feet. Air November 34, Trey Whiskey Bravo, Salt Lake Center, continue as planned. So let's see what happens. They said we should expect vectors for one six. Bravo traffic is one o'clock three miles at fourteen thousand eight hundred feet generic. Report them in sight. That's him. I got him. Delver Trey Whiskey Bravo have the generic in sight. A lot of chop. Holy shit. You can always tell which way an airplane is going, either coming at you or away from you based on the red or green light. The green light is on the right side of the airplane, the red light's on the left. See the green light is on the right there, so we can conclude it's headed away from us. Anyway, uh, um, the pre-programmed GPS route, as you can see, is just straight to the airport. No, no vectors, no approach, route plotted, nothing like that. So I'm curious to see what will happen. Air traffic control said expect vectors for visual approach runway 16. So, will it do that or not? The good news is it's not a concern because look at this weather. It's perfect, perfect VFR weather. They're bringing them in to the south-facing runway as well. So, huh, who knows? I'm curious if that lake I saw earlier... Oh, come on, guys. I think that lake I saw earlier is Utah Lake, that right there. Why clear me down to 10,000 and then clear, told them, tell me to go back up to 11? Climb and maintain flight level 190. Expect ILS runway tree approach by Tango Charlie Hotel transition. Clear to Tango Charlie Hotel Allegiant 671. About seven minutes. Allegiant 671. I'm genuinely curious what it's going to do. I can't remember if I'd. Uh... Whoops. Ah, oh, sorry. Pushed the wrong button. I meant to sync the heading button, instead I activated the heading. 
No problem, anyway. Anyway, uh, the radio, radio instruction Delta to that uh, one Delta 1601 was to uh, land on the south-facing runway, like we're being told to do. So, see where this leads. Because they want us to land on runway 16, we're also going to have to make a U-turn. At least, that's what I would expect, since the runway we're landing on faces this way, faces south. Okay, we're leveling down 11,000 feet right now. I was astonished looking at the satellite images of the U.S. today that basically the entire country, except for the southeast, has no weather. <laughs> Just clear skies. A little bit of weather in the southeast, but... I think the leftovers of Hurricane Delta. Anyway, we are at uh, level at uh, 11,000. Approach this day or three, Whiskey Bravo, with you at 11,000. 34 Trey Whiskey Bravo, 11,000 feet. Let's see what happens here. We're 2993, let's adjust that. 2993, okay, that's adjusted. See, I adjusted that to 9.93. We in the States use inches of mercury than the Europe and the rest of the world. They use Q and H. Just millibars. So two nine or nine or three would be, I don't know, just guessing. One thousand and thirteen or something like that. Close to it. Anyway, I'm showing us four minutes and fifty one seconds from the airport itself, but I'm still waiting to see how they're gonna handle the vectors. Especially since there's no air traffic control tower at this airport. Very interesting. Yes, that lake I saw earlier was not the Great Salt Lake. It was Utah Lake. That's the Great Salt Lake. <laughs> Considerably larger, needless to say. Reset the camera. Sometimes it gets a little bit goofy. So I have this ad. It's... Whoops. 9,100 day or three, Whiskey Bravo. Descend and maintain 9,100 for your Docker Tray Whiskey Bravo. Anyway, I, I, I don't have the usual uh, nerves or frustrations that I have when ATC starts acting weird, which it hasn't yet, by the way. We're still getting descent instructions, we're still being vectored in. And the reason for that I don't have those concerns is because Docker of the weather. Now to 8,500 near the Lucy Rubble. Descend and maintain 8,500 feet. 8,500 feet. Descending at 800 feet per minute. Let's increase that a little. Showing us 3 minutes, 19 seconds. 3 minutes, 16 seconds. From the airport. And that, out there, I suspect, is the Salt Lake International. I just wonder what they're going to do when it comes to vectoring me in. I guess we'll find out here very shortly, two and a half minutes. Wow. Rough. You like to think you could do a low, al low altitude IFR flight from point A to point B in any kind of weather and have the sim cooperate but it's a work in progress as it, as it comes to the procedure I don't uh, claim to be an expert that is procedure for IFR approaches to uncontrolled airports 
little more technical. No more issues with that Delta flight because it's obviously going faster than we. It's pulled away. The Great Basin. And there's the lake. There's the lake. You grab that screenshot. It's cool. Wow. That's another cool screenshot. Well, we're at 8,500 feet and 60 seconds from the airport, so you're going to see. There is the airport on the visualized, simulated visualization. That's it. You're going to see with me what's going to happen. No idea. I don't want to stray too far north past the airport because eh, there's airplanes in the vicinity of SLC. Now, 36 seconds. I wish I could uh, add a drum roll sound effect. Right over the airport. There it is. Should be back to the land this way. I don't know. I'm starting to wonder. Eight seconds. Okay. Interesting. Descend and maintain 6,600 feet. Got her tree whiskey bravo. Yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by this. See the airplanes. Yeah. Got the runway, I just flew over it. Maintain present heading and altitude, Docker Tray Whiskey Bravo. Okay, this goes against all my instincts because I want to Docker Tray Whiskey Bravo, I have the runway in sight. <laughs> I want to begin an approach, but I'm I'm so curious. Docker Tray Whiskey Bravo, you are three miles north of Uniform 42. Maintain present heading and altitude. Okay. Hmm. This is Maintain present heading and altitude. Tray whiskey Bravo. That's SLC out there. Uniform 42 traffic Docker November Tree 4 Tray Whiskey Bravo 4 miles north inbound visual runway 16. Well, there you go. I guess I've been sort of thrown to the wolves. Uniform 42 traffic Docker November Tree 4 Tray Whiskey Bravo is on final runway 16 to land. <laughs> I'm on final. Okay, okay. Let's do this. I get it. They're doing the best they can. Landing gear. Ah, that mouse wheel drives me nuts. I guess I'm on my own now. Let's keep our turn going. No, we're landing at runway 16. Got our heading bug at, let's say, 180, so we don't overshoot it. I wonder how this would work in, in, in IMC conditions, though. I mean, would, well, maybe you wouldn't. There's no RNAV, there's no non precision, there's no precision approaches. Maybe you just wouldn't fly into an airport like this in those conditions. should always be open to the possibility that there is no answer landing gear or that the only answer is to not go okay I'm gonna take over the airplane autopilot disengaged and there's the runway 
You see those flashing white lights? Those are uh, called riles or runway end identifier lights. Looking okay. Your speed's almost good for flaps. Let's get our oh good, our landing lights are already on, okay. Flaps one. Let's pop up in our seat just a little. Flaps two. Your speed ninety four, ninety one. Eighty five. Uh, I'm looking for poppies or vasis. The airport website says they do have poppies. And actually, I think I do see them now off the left side of the runway. Can't zoom in right now because I'm uh, hand flying this baby, but you'll see it with me. Because we're getting closer to it by about uh, 86 knots. Those poppies are precision approach. Two mile final runway 16. Those poppies, precision approach path indicators, are really essential to being able to find a glide slope using nothing but your eyes. That is, you want two whites, two reds, and if you achieve two whites and two reds, you and maintain it, 500 AGL, you are uh, on a three degree glide slope. So as near as I can figure, you do a situation like this, air traffic control will get you in the vicinity, and then you just fly it uh, VFR in, if you're fortunate enough. See four whites there on the poppy, so that just means we're a little, a little bit high. And now, there you go, three whites, one red. Let's get that red back. Air speed's fine. Confirming runway 16. Two and two with poppies. Wind is out of the southeast, according to the sim, anyway. Parking's off to the right. Those white marks are the thousand foot markers. Idle. Okay. Reverse thrusters. Wind's pushing us. Kind of had to stick that landing a little more than I prefer. Uh, but it's a comparatively short runway, 5,600 feet. Not really short, but kind of short enough anyway. All right. So again, there's no need to contact ground control or anything like that. Just use our combination of our handy dandy four flight app and also zooming in. It's got flaps. Yeah, taxi light. Pulse light off. Zoom in on our MFT here. You can actually get a close up of the airport. Very handy. So you can see we landed. Those are the thousand foot markers at the up end of the runway that we landed on. We took our exit here, which is fine. Not too terrible. We are on um, taxiway Alpha 2. This uh, this runway, or, <laughs> this is the runway. This taxiway is Alpha. That's Alpha 3. That's Alpha 2. So we're on Alpha 2, and GA parking is just uh, right in front of us. You can actually almost make it out. as close as we can zoom in, but if you look, you can actually see parking spaces there. That's amazing. So anyway, we should have done this a moment, a moment ago, but uh, let's announce that we're clear of the runway. Well, let's reset our Uniform cam. 4 traffic Docker, November 3, 4 tray, Whiskey Bravo is clear of the runway. And we're just going to go park over here. Try not to hit the fire truck. Hopefully they're not coming for me. Ha, ha, ha.
Boy, with that in mind. Any fire trucks coming? No. Go ahead and depressurize the airplane while we're... Now that we're on the ground. Well, that was interesting. I, I, I didn't know what to expect. But I, at least I have proof of concept now that you can fly from an uncontrolled airport to an uncontrolled airport. In point of fact, this is might be worth trying in completely in sim instead of using the setup page, because I could enter three points on the FPL. I mean, I know how to do that. Let's go ahead and uh, take this next. Uh... Oh look, or if that's Gary. Hmm, let's find out. Go left here. Turn off our taxi lights. Steer with those feet. No. Let's turn this way. You can tell you're given guidance on the orientation. Come on, there, get out of the way, jackass. Guidance on the orientation, you want to park into the T. Easier with Gary, that's for sure. But it pays to be patient. All right, I'll take that. Not pretty, but better than these guys. <laughs> All right. Parking brake. Pedo heat off. Warm out oh, still. 31. Just like yesterday. Uh, kill the engine. Fuel tank selector to off. Anyway, it's an ongoing learning process for sure. Uh, but I, I was curious what would happen. How, you know, I'm all, to a certain extent, you know, you're flying from these giant airports to these other giant airports, and and uh, you know, in a general aviation aircraft like this, you're not going to see that too much. I haven't actually. I have mostly avoided giant international airports because I find that it's it saps the experience of realism. But um, still, you know, damn it! If I want to fly from a little tiny airport in the middle of nowhere to another little tiny airport in the middle of nowhere, and I need to be able to fly IFR, I want to know that I can. So I actually feel um, encouraged by this uh, short little flight, and uh, think that there's more to learn. Obviously, always is, uh, but uh, I should. Uh, take some encouragement from the fact that this went well. Almost forgot. So, uh, we'll shut down the lights and uh, we'll cut it off. Cut, uh, cut uh, to the end of the story, which is right now. And uh, we're in Salt Lake City, so we'll see where we're headed next. I think Coeur d'Alene in Idaho. But that's it for now.